Hi and welcome to another of my videos on emotional intelligence, that all important aspect of our leadership and our lives. Um, now in the last video I talked about the importance of self-awareness, now, now that's really the foundation of emotional intelligence and leadership and pretty much any kind of uh, personal development because we've got to know what it is we've got to develop. So the first step is, is really an exploration in, in what our strengths are, what our weaknesses, what we struggle with, uh, what we do well and all that kind of thing. But the, importantly, how do we do that? Now, of course, we can just sit there and think about it and that is one way of doing it. But I'm going to give you my top five ways of developing and improving your uh, self-awareness. So number one is a daily reflection or if you haven't got time, weekly reflection, but it doesn't have to take long. And this is done in a kind of formal way. I'm gonna talk next about another way of doing this. But a daily reflection is really, at the end of each day, is, is having a little bit of a sit down, a self-analysis of what went well, what could have gone better, and importantly, your actions. It only takes a few minutes. This is um, incidentally something I all, also use at the end of every meeting I chair or run or help with. Uh, and at the every, every meeting I have, and sometimes even at the end of, of a conversation or an interaction I've had with someone. And the point of this is that if you get into this habit, especially of what could have gone better, you're consciously thinking about what you may have responded to negatively, what you could then take into the next interaction or meeting or the next day, and it starts whittling down and it starts improving bit by bit uh, your effectiveness of a day. So basically, you know, one of my big things is procrastination. So I write a diary all day of what I'm doing and then I look back at the end of the day and I go right what could have gone better and usually it's someone to do you know I faffed around on Facebook for half an hour that day and because I've consciously brought it up it means that the next day I'm going to remember that and it gradually it, it, it improves and over years and years I mean I'm pretty much the way that I work now is 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 unrecognizable from the way I used to work 10 years ago so it's it, it really does work so daily reflection okay number two uh, related to that is a journal, keeping a journal. Now it's slightly different because it doesn't have to be quite so formalized, but what you'll find is that if you do keep a daily journal or every few days, um, it will bring up all, all, all the things that you do into your consciousness again, and you can sit and it's a really, I mean, it works on so many different, different levels. It's so good for you. I mean, now we know um, that there's so much research on this, but keeping a journal and sort of monitoring your life in that way is really therapeutic and beneficial, but I'm not gonna go into all that now. But just as a self-awareness exercise, again, you're sitting down and you're really thinking about what you're doing and what you're responding to. And if you have that in your mind, as an idea of I'm gonna sit down as a self-awareness exercise, you'll, you'll find that you'll notice all those things a lot more because you've consciously decided to do that. Um, and it's just a lovely thing to do. I mean, I, I keep a journal and sometimes I go out of it for a bit and come back to it, but I just find it so, so useful in so many ways. So two is keep a journal. Three is a difficult one or can be a difficult one, and that is finding out how people see you, okay? Getting as close as the reality of how people see you as possible, and this is a really difficult thing to do. Now, you can do this at work with 360 feedback, 360 feedback is so, so valuable, but remember, you don't have to agree with it all. It's just giving you a guide. So, you know, if you're getting 360 feedback and you, someone, you know someone that actually has an issue with you, then take that with a pinch of salt, but it can still be very, very useful. And it's a really hard thing. If you're like me and you, you find constructive criticism very difficult to deal with, it can be something you avoid. But I suggest you not. The more you do it, the more you, used to it you'll get and it's a really valuable thing to do. Now, if you're not in a position to do 360 feedback, if you're like me and you're a freelancer, what I often do is I ask my clients for feedback, but I, I emphasize that I don't just want a pat on the back. You know, the important stuff is what could I do better? And sometimes I do the, what could we do? Like I did a session yesterday, a leadership session, and we, we done a thing about, because it was the end of a course that I'd run, and we did the, you know, what went well, what could have gone better, and all that, like I talked about before, uh, and, and that again was feedback. And again, I'm emphasizing, please try and be honest. Now you'll find people that will still find it very difficult to be honest in front of you. So maybe it's worth asking them for written feedback a couple of weeks down the line. And again, emphasizing honesty. Another thing you can do, and this is still with the, um, in number three, is if you can't get feedback, if you're not running courses, you can't get feedback in that formal way, is ask your nearest and dearest. Tell them that you're doing a self-awareness exercise. You're trying to find out really what, how people see you and, and just emphasize the fact that what I'm gonna do over the next few weeks is just ask you 
you know how I've been in certain ways and try and get closer to how how you see me and how, how you know what things do you think I don't do very well and that can be a really really powerful thing to do so in some way it's finding out it's trying to get people to be as honest as possible and not just giving you a pat on the back um, and of course you want to hear the good stuff as well now the next one number four is you gotta be careful with this. This is using some sort of tool in order to, you know, if you can't get the 360 fabric, it, 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 to, to analyze yourself. Now, there are loads of things out there. A lot of people have done the Myers-Briggs test where it's a typology thing where you find out whether you're introverted and then I'm not gonna go into what Myers-Briggs is now. Uh, there are loads of there's psychometric testing and it's basically an emotional intelligence testing. You can actually go online and do emotional intelligence testing. And it's basically a way of answering, doing a questionnaire and getting some feedback and people will try and tell you what type you are roughly. And this is really important. I have a little bit of an issue with typologies, with all of them, because they tend, a lot of them tend to say you are this. And what we can do if we're not careful is we can then try and sort of subconsciously behave like that because we've been told what we are. Now, I don't think it's that useful for that. And if you listen to what Ken Robinson says, he says a lovely thing that we, it's like think, our personalities are like fingerprints. They're all totally different. But of course, we do fit into categories because if we ever meet someone that doesn't fit into a category we recognize, we find that really difficult, right? But this is not about labeling ourselves, but it's about codifying and it's about, well, it is about labeling ourselves with a pinch of salt so it can be the start of a conversation. And that's the point of it. So if I do any kind of personality test, I get it back and I go, right, I'm not gonna believe all of this, this categorizes me exactly. But what I'll do is I'll look at a part of it and go, okay, it says I'm an introvert, that's interesting, what does that mean? And then I'll start thinking about it and then I can question that. And it's just a lens to see, to, it gives you little compartments of yourself that you can analyze and then come up with your own ideas. It's also great to be coached around something like this. So if you do do, an emotional intelligence test or a psychometric test, it's a great thing to sit down with a coach and discuss. Uh, all you're doing is saying, okay, it says I'm this, what do I think about that? And it's, sometimes it's just as useful to, to disagree than it is to agree, because all it's making you do is actually consciously think about those aspects of your personality. Again, a really useful thing to do, but I don't think it's that useful, again, to, to completely pigeonhole people and, and label them. And number five, similarly, um, is to analyze yourself against models. Now, this isn't a, necessarily a typology, but it's looking at leadership models. It's looking at different um, definitions of leadership and just basically using that as a guide to go, okay, well, that says leadership. For leadership, you've got to be good at flexibility. So how flexible am I? How good am I at kind of going from being a directive leader to being a coaching leader? Um, it says uh, on this model that you've got to be a good listener to be a good leader. So what am I like for listening? So it just makes you kind of look at all the different aspects and gives you, gives you a kind of target to go towards to look at rather than just sitting there and going, what am I like as a person? You know, and, and it gives you an idea of all the, then it will give you an idea of all the different things you can then build up and work on if you so choose to do. And there are loads and loads of models which I'll cover on other videos that I use uh, to do this. So there it is, your, my top five um, activities, really, if you like, to raise and improve our self-awareness. If you've got any more, please comment. If you've got any more ideas, anything that works for you, and I'm sure there's loads you'll think of that I haven't mentioned, but I don't wanna give you my top 25 because you'll be here for about three and a half hours and you'll lose the will to live. If you've liked the video, subscribe. I'm not gonna spam you. I'm not gonna do any of that sort of stuff. It's just to let you know when new videos uh, come up so if you go onto my site which is getgoodatstuff.com getgoodatstuff.com you'll see a sign up form there and like i said you'll just be uh, informed of you know i don't really sell many products or anything so you'll just be informed of blogs of videos and of maybe live training events that i'll be doing but i'm not going to be hammering you with emails every day uh, and of course you can unsubscribe at any time so have a great one enjoy the rest of uh, your day or your evening or whatever time you're watching this and see you later